In 1918, as we were drawing to a close around the world, uh, the World War I, <clears throat> in this country we were so elated, of course, to have our GIs come back home that we began to sing, as some of you may know, the national anthem at all Major League Baseball games. So during the Second World War, this really picked up steam and spread all throughout all sporting events, which we see today, don't we? Is that people remove their hats and they put their hand above their heart as a symbol of patriotism. So regardless, hopefully at least, of where someone may lie politically with their party affiliation, we can all agree that we want the best for our country. Hopefully, it's a symbol. There's a whole field of study out there, I'm sure probably some of us are aware of. It's called semiotics. And semiotics is the study of symbols and the importance of symbols, the meaning of symbols. And as Americans, right, we got plenty of this, don't we? I mean, like on our dollar bill. Look at your dollar bill, right? And you'll see everything from an eye to a pyramid to an olive branch to a bald eagle, including, by the way, two Latin inscriptions. What are those? Anuit Sceptis e Pluribus Unum. What does e Pluribus Unum mean? Out of the many, one. We have a lot of symbols, lots and lots of symbols. You know, it's ironic, in my opinion, that sometimes our enemies actually understand American symbols better than Americans. September 11, 2001, for instance, Al Qaeda attacked. What they saw was the symbol of American military power, the Pentagon, and the symbol of American commerce, the World Trade Center. Symbols are very, very important. I mean, think about it. After you leave here today, if somebody texts you on, on your phone, if they text you a thumbs up, what does that mean? Good job, right? If they text you a different finger, what does that mean? Right? Okay, <laughs> hopefully it won't happen, all right? Symbols mean, they, like, they're very, very important for us. We don't, we don't really even think about, right? But the truth is, with symbols, it's not the symbol itself that gives strength. It's the people and the God behind the symbol that give us strength. In other words, it's the people and the God that actually give the symbol strength. Those of you that are married, you know this far better than I. It's interesting, isn't it? When a couple stands here, they exchange their wedding rings only after, after they've exchanged their vows. That comes second, the rings. And they put it on their third finger, as you may have heard me say, to call on the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit to bless their union. Oh, and by the way, it's circular, representing eternity. There's no end to it. It's my job to get you to heaven. So work with me, honey, right? It's my job as your pastor, hopefully, to get you to heaven. But look, I want to get there too, so work with me, okay? As Catholics, we have so many symbols. So I'm just curious, if, if you don't mind me asking, by show of hands, how many people here have spent their whole life Catholic? Okay, so most of us, yeah. So, have you, have you noticed some of these symbols in Catholic churches? I mean, let me give you an example. So, in a few minutes, everybody in this church will come up, and you're going to walk over this symbol right here on the floor. I mean, you see it every Sunday. I don't know how many actually see it. And it looks like a P with a cross going through it. Does anybody know what that is? A Chi Rho, thank you, thank you. Chi, C H I R H O. <clears throat> what does that mean? It's the first two letters of the Greek word Christus or Christ. You, you probably have heard me say that in the Catholic world, here at St. Mike's at least, we have four candles representing the four what? Gospels, the four cardinal virtues prudence, justice, temperance, and fortitude. We just used incense. What is incense a symbol of? Prayers, Psalm 141. 
O Lord, our prayers rise like incense before you. <clears throat> That's where that comes from. Side note, by the way, if priests hear you coughing, they're going to put more incense in there. <laughs> okay? So if you don't want them to put more in, don't cough. All right, hold it in. So when you, when you walked in this morning, you turned and you dipped your hand into holy water. What is that a symbol of? Baptism. Hmm. What is light a symbol of? You are the light of the world, Jesus tells us. You're the light of the world. In this church, we have 12 chandeliers for the 12 apostles. Of many, many different symbols. By the way, I, what is this? Why does, this? why does a priest wear this kind of dress thing? Right? So in the Old Testament, <clears throat> we're told that the priests, the Levitical class, used to wear what was called an ephod. King David, when he led the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem, said he danced before it wearing a linen ephod. So this is where this evolved from, was from our Jewish brethren. And this is why the priest wears this. By the way, what does green represent? Right, ordinary time, but what else? Hope. When things grow in nature, they're green. New life. What about the red that we wear at Pentecost? Um, we also wear this, for instance, on Palm Sunday. We wear this on a saint's feast day who's been martyred. What do you have in your body that's red? Blood. Um, this is, you know, the cardinals in Rome. They wear red, of course, because they have to hide all that spaghetti sauce. No. They have to, they have to hide all the... They, it's a symbol of the fact that they're willing to shed their blood for the Pope. That's where that comes from. And we've had plenty of cardinals that have done that. What about white? Purity, right? It represents purity and new life. This is why, for instance, when we have a baptism, which I will have later today, the baby is wearing white. I have white around my collar. When a young bride walks in, She's wearing white. When we have a coffin here for a funeral, we cover it with white. What about purple? Come December 1st, as we begin the Advent season, we will wear purple. Also during Lent, represents penance. When, before Jesus was crucified, they covered him with purple because it was a symbol of royalty. They were making fun of him. Oh, hail, King of the Jews. Hmm. Why does a priest wear black? What color do you wear at a funeral? We have died to ourself. I no longer live for Father Ben. I live for my bride. That's what that represents. Interesting. Lots of, lots of symbolism. And yet, it is not the symbol that gives us strength. It is the people and the God behind those symbols that give the symbol strength. And yet, here's the irony. The most important thing in the Catholic Church <laughs> is not a symbol. To be clear, the Eucharist is not a symbol. In 1964, one of my very favorite Catholic authors, Flannery O'Connor, she died of lupus, and before she died, this is what she said about the Eucharist. She said, you know, if the Eucharist is just a symbol, to hell with it. She said, if the Eucharist is just a symbol, to hell with it. Why are we here? Let's go get a donut and watch football. On the other hand, she said, if this is more than a symbol, well, that changes everything. Wait, 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 Father. You're telling me you guys actually believe that this is God? How, how, can, you, how can you believe this? Because God told us it was him. So he's either lying or he's a psychopath or he actually is who he says he is. There's nothing in between. He wasn't a nice guy. 
Nice guys don't claim to be God. John chapter 6, my flesh is true food, my blood is true drink. Unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life within you. No, this is more than just a symbol. More, much more. Because it's not something, it's someone. And that, my friends, changes everything. Changes everything. So I'll close with this. One of my favorite parts of a wedding is to stand here and watch a father walk his daughter down the aisle. <clears throat> Gentlemen, some of you have been in that, ex- you've had that experience and some of you will have that experience. And in a father's mind, when he walks his daughter down the aisle, every single step is a symbol of a memory. I remember I dropped her off for ACT. I remember I dropped her off for prom. I dropped her off for kindergarten. I taught her how to ride a bike. I changed a diaper. I caught her uh, sneaking out of the house at 3 a.m. You have all these memories, right? And in a father's mind, they're like, how did, wait, what? Like 30 minutes ago, we were here. And now we're here. It's a symbol. And then he gets up here with his daughter. He turns to her, pulls back her veil, gives her a kiss on the cheek, takes his daughter's hand, passes it to his new son-in-law, and says, don't mess it up, buddy. (laughs) Right? It's a symbol of something so much richer. But the truth is, and I'll close with this, I promise, you and I, we are symbols of God. Because you and I are made in God's image and likeness. When they see me, they see you. When they hear me, they hear you. When they talk to me, they talk to you. And when they encounter me, they encounter you.